Hello, my name is Josh, and today I'm going to show you five easy ways to make better hyperpop type beats. No matter if you're using FL Studio, Ableton, Logic, it don't even matter. The first step to making better hyperpop beats is taking advantage of different pockets. A pocket in this case is a certain type of groove. Think of it like a style of beat. So you have your four on the four type beat. Girl, I ain't ask you. does it have You know, that kind of thing. Then you have the trap type beat. It's like, detest me. Then you have the Pink Panthers type DMB type stuff like the point is that with the same tempo of your beat, you can play with a lot of different styles of drums. As a producer, you can take advantage of this and make different sections of your beat have different pockets. So for this beat right here, I have a four on the floor type section. And then for the hook, I go into a trap halftime type section. And so really listen to the difference in the drums here. And then for verse two, I go into a double time section. The snare, instead of being on the three, would be on the two and the four. What changing these pockets does is a couple things. First is that it makes your beats way more dynamic and less boring to listen to. The second thing it does is also gives the listener or the artist a really clear sense of what the arrangement is. Because if the energy's super big, kind of like this, there's a chance that that's going to be the hook. And then when it kind of dies back down, they're going to intuitively know that that's the verse. Moving on to the second step is to create moments with pitching and effects. The difference between really good music and amazing music are moments. Right before this hook, I took the guitar loop and pitched it up 12. It's almost like a signal that the hook is about to happen. Another cool thing I've been playing with a lot recently is this plugin called M Rhythmizer. And see, so right here we got this M Rhythmizer doing some vinyl restart. And what I'm doing is basically just automating the dry wet. It kind of just gives you this glitchy, like fucked up type sound that I personally really like. Anytime you have an end of a section, like an end of a verse or an end of a pre-chorus or an end of a hook, these are great moments to insert those kind of ear candy type moments. And that brings us to step number three, which is to layer your bases. Now you can always go with a good old 808. It might get the job done, but nine times out of 10 with this hyper pop bullshit, it ain't gonna cut it. But what will cut it is layering your bases. Usually I like to think about the bass in a couple ways. Number one is the low end. Two is a mid bass and three is white noise. For the low bass, I usually either use a sub and serum or an 808. And so for this, I went with an 808. Also just so happens to be from my free breakings kit. If you wanna check that out. I'm basically just looking for something that really kind of hits me in the chest and like fills out that low frequency a lot. Next is the mid bass. And so what I do with this is pitch it up an octave. And then I either use serum or an 808 for this and filter out the lows and the highs. And here's what those sound like together. And lastly, we got white noise. I use serum in this case, which is just ARP with this ARP white noise, but ARP pink works. I don't know, really just whatever floats your boat. EQ'd out almost all the lows and the highs. Use this S1 imager just to kind of widen it a little bit and voila. Something else that's good to do is to group all these bases together and process and really glue them together. Some plugins I like to do this with are OTT, turning down some of the downwards compression, then just mess with the depth knob. A little EQ just to kind of take out some of the highs or boost them if you wanted to. And then this plugin Crush, which is one of my favorite distortion bit crush type plugins. And I usually just mess with the drive and this filter a little bit and then just adjust the dry wet to taste. It just really helps me shape the tone of the sound. And then lastly, I just put this bass mono on there just cause I don't want any phasing problems or anything like that. That can happen when you have really low sub frequencies that aren't in mono. Next is step number four, which is to saturate and clip everything or as much as possible. Most people think that getting that extra loudness in their beats is because of a limiter or something like that. Most of the times it boils down to is good sound selection and then saturation. Saturation gives sound more perceived loudness because it creates additional harmonics to the sound. A lot of times you can get something really loud with distortion, but it's not as clean. It's really messy. Saturation is going to give you a very clean, loud sound. Some of my favorite ways to do this are to use it on specific drums or to use it on the drum bus, the master, synths, guitars, really anything. Some of my favorite plugins to do this are just the stock Ableton saturator, the Softude saturation knob, FabFilter Saturn, and the Abbey Road saturator. Any of these are going to give you a really good sound. If your beats aren't hitting quite as hard or as loud as you want, I would definitely mess with putting saturation 
concentration on some of your elements and even your master. Now the last step I'm going to talk about today is step number five, which is to put effects on your effects. This is something that I think a lot of people overlook doing, but can really help your beats be different. And so let's say we have this riser right here. Pretty simple riser, but what we want to do is add depth to this sound. And some of the ways we can do that are with a reverb. See, so it kind of gives it that little tail right there. Auto pan. We could do a flanger phaser. You could even throw that M rhythmizer plugin I talked about earlier on there. The goal of this is just to make more interesting sounds that don't sound stock and basic. Just remember there are no rules to this. Don't put pressure on yourself. Just have fun and enjoy experimenting. That's it for today's video. Hope y'all enjoyed it. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Regardless of anything, y'all have an amazing rest of your week and I'll see you next time. Love you.